dear brothers and sisters i welcome you all to see this video message today prophecy prayer point for women reservation bill that is women participation in politic should be improved in india why we has to pray for women reservation participation bill because women have 50% of population in india but they have merely 9% of political representation in state assemblies and only 14% mps in parliament we should pray 50% of women participation and political reservation should happen in india by women reservation bill should enacted in this year this article i write wrote on 15th july 2020 this video takes around one and a half hour it will comes to three part every video takes half an hour time what is women reservation india is one of the few democratic countries in the world that provided early voting rights to women women hold 46 percentage of the post in our three tier panchayat system many states namely bihar uttarakhand himachal pradesh chatisgarh madhya pradesh andhra pradesh karnataka jharkhand kerala maharashtra odisha rajasthan and tripura further raised the women reservation level to 50% from 33% in local gram panchayat administration however the same is not reflected in the number of women in parliament and assemblies central to the women reservation bill is the idea that increasing women's participation in decision making is intrinsic to strengthening women's empowerment as enshrined by equality of rights and freedom in the premiable and constitution of india feminism is a collection of movements and ideologies that share a common goal to define establish and achieve equal political economic cultural personal and social rights for women this includes seeking to establish equal opportunities for women in education and employment in our country where half the population are women only a mere 14% of the lok sabha members are women the national average of women mla is even worse as 9% in mizoram no even single women mlas and in pandicherry after 20 years four women mlas are comes to legislative why women policy makers needed from a development perspective men and women are very different policy makers research shows that the gender of the politician hugely influences the policy decisions a study reveals that rural rajasthan and west bengal women elected as leaders under the reservation policy invest more in the public goods more closely linked to women concern that is drinking water and roads in west bengal and drinking water in rajasthan research of unicef have found that villages with reservation of women are less likely to bar bribes 
children have access to more drinking water and better immunization and female school attendance is greater in general women policy makes invest more in public goods provisions like child care maternal care schooling and public safety compared to men the main purpose of women reservation is to ensure democratic representation and bring forth issues of a particular group which otherwise is not addressed a lot of times the reason for the under representation of certain groups is not because they are under qualified or undeserving it is rather because of inherent bias against a particular caste gender and sect it is likely that there will be some inefficiencies or as a result of reservation i do agree moderately that a 50 percentage of reservation may result in some under qualified women to enter instead of a qualified woman man but for now to ensure overall development of the country from various dimensions it is important to have the women's reservation bill people have to change their perception regarding women reservation is not a woman versus men fight this is fight for demolishing the hegemonic social structure that disallows a particular gender of care right men should be standing with women in this fight not against them origin of women reservation bill and present scenario in 1952 jawaharlal nehru wrote a letter to all his chief ministers regarding women participation in legislative role in the letter he writes i have noticed with great regret how few women have been elected i suppose this so in the state assemblies and councils also it is not a matter of showing favor to anyone or even injustice but rather of doing something which is not conductive to the future growth of the country i am quite sure our real growth will only come when women have a full chance to play their part in public life in the year 1952 women were 49 percentage of the country population but the first lok sabha in the same year saw merely 22 women getting elected and appealing of 5 percentage of the entire house a mere 9 percentage increase in the last 70 years serves as a sobering reminder of how slow the progress has been the original idea for this bill originated from a constitutional amendment which was passed back in 1993 the constitutional amendment stated that a random one third of village council leader or sarpanch position in the grama panchayat should be reserved for women the women reservation bill was launched as a long term plan to extend this reservation to lok sabha and state legislative assemblies currently the bill is still bending in the lower house of parliament the bill will only be passed if the ruling government supports the bill with full force as they have the majority in lok sabha though there has not been any major development regarding the passing of the women's reservation bill in the recent months there is no hope that the bill will be passed in lok sabha states like tripura nagaland arunachal pradesh himachal pradesh and the former state of jammu and kashmir don't have a single woman mp in lok sabha in fact 
Nagaland has never had a female MLA. This begets the question how is India failing its women so miserably and why don't we have reservation for women yet? It has been 22 years since the Women Reservation Bill was first introduced in Parliament in 1996 and then in 1998 and 1999 and 2008. The representation of women in Parliament and in decision-making roles in public sphere is one of the key indicators of empowerment. The people who opposed this bill consider this as preferential treatment towards women of India. Global Scenario of Women Role in Policy Making While the global average for women in parliament stands at 22.4%, India is at the 103rd place out of 140 countries with a mere 14% representation. Countries like South Sudan, Saudi Arabia have better women representation in parliament than India. Only three countries have more than 50% representation of women that is Bolivia, Cuba and Rwanda. The Nordic countries alone have 41.5 percentage average of women MPs. 13 countries in the world women constitute 40 percentage of the total seat in the national parliament. 42 countries in the world have 30 percentage of more women MPs in their parliament. While Europe surpasses the global average at 25.2 Sub-Saharan Africa has an average representation of 22.6% and Asia at 19% and the Arab states at 18%. Topping this group is Rwanda where women MPs make up for 63.8% of the parliament outnumbering the men. Of the 8 SARC countries, India's position is a ignominious fifth. Nepal with 29.5 percentage women leads the Sark group. Even Pakistan and Bangladesh at 20 percent each ensure much better representation for women in their parliament. There is some catching up to do for India within the region to ensure gender equity in the highest elected body of the country. Rwanda Country Model Rwanda is a fantastic case study of how to do things right to get more women to the parliament. Women were widely victimized through the genocide, both killed and also raped and sexually tortured in Rwanda. Before the genocide on 1994, women held few political offices, lacked inheritance rights to property and were prohibited from profit-making organizations. But now women become the center of its recovery, changing politics and its economic progress. The real success of the Rwanda model, however, can be seen from the gradual increase in women representative to 48% in 2003 and 56% in 2008 and to present strength of 64%. The constitution was amended in 2003 to provide for a minimum 30% quota for women in all decision making bodies including parliament and other government agencies. While it has 30 percentage of reservation for women at the parliament, that is, there is active participation of women at all levels right down to the crossroads. President Paul Gajame, who had led the country since his army, stopped the genocide on 1994 
Kahame decided that Rwanda was so demolished, so broken, it simply could not rebuild with men's labor alone. So the country's new constitution passed in 2003 decreed that 30% percentage of parliamentary seats be reserved for women. The government also pledged that girls' education would be encouraged, that women would be appointed to leadership roles like government ministers and police chiefs. That is a heartwarming affirmative action for a country that is reconstructing itself post-genocide. Indian lawmakers and political establishment could learn valuable lessons from Rwanda and take steps to correct the historical wrongs in India for development of India with a male counterpart patriarchal support. The report found that Rwanda has acknowledged the importance of gender equality and women empowerment as tools for development and has made remarkable advances in furthering the status of women and girls, especially in education and political participation. Currently, women account for just over a quarter of all of bomb jobs and the transition from agriculture is slower than the that of men. As part of this effort, Rwanda will triple the number of girls enrolled in technical and vocational training by the year 2020. Now, women have a greater autonomy in family decision making and are speaking of more in public forums. Socially, it is no longer acceptable in public venues to make denigrating comments about women. Women have also entered the workforce in large numbers. Rwanda now has one of the highest rates of female labor participation globally. The high level of women and their visibility have started changing the social and cultural norms in the country, symbolically increasing women's power over the years. Rwandan women really feel like they have found respect. Rwanda has become a model for economic and gender development in the region. Infant mortality in Rwanda has called and per capita GDP risen more than sixfold since 2000. According to the African Development Bank, Rwanda growth remains good at 7.2% in 2018. In Rwanda, there is even a gender monitoring office which is tasked with monitoring, advising and advocating for gender equality in all institutions in the country. India also should plan to implement like this for women empowerment. Committee for Empowerment of Women in India also should be rewarmed along with gender monitoring office to be launched in India and be provided with a constitutional mandate to look into the gender policy of every major governmental action. National Commission for Women, a statutory body that plays an advisory role to the government of India, should function as a truly representative affects body of all issues related to gender parity. After that, only while parliament legislative, the Women Reservation Bill, it will be effective to increase women representation across the highest legislative bodies in the country. What are the hurdles of women participation in politics? Money and muscle power have traditionally played an integral role in securing electoral victories. Women fare poorly in both departments given that economic empowerment of women in India is still at a nascent stage and is on shaky ground. With female workforce participation falling to 
point percentage. Only 14 percentage of women in the agricultural sector own the farms they work on and a majority of the property in India is still in the hands of men. Women also find it harder to acquire muscle power as they have traditionally been associated with domestic roles and not with positions of political leadership, making it difficult task to break out of the mould. The growing phenomenon of the criminalization of politics further acts as a deterrent for women for not only to the lack influence and experience in this male dominated sphere, they are often at the receiving end of many of these crimes. Dirtier the politics, lesser the scope of female participation. A total of 43 percentage of our MBs have criminal cases bending against them and they are primarily men with a few exceptions like Prakya Thakur. Position of women in India Women suffer from unequal opportunities even before birth that is female infanticide, girl child malnutrition, denial of education, child marriages, property rights, social exclusion, UTCing, crime against women, domestic violence, dowry murders are all the social crimes that go unpunished in our Indian society today. India has always been a patriarchal society excluding some tribal cultures, especially of Northeast India, where women have always been given the role of cooking, cleaning, carrier, etc., whereas men have always been the provider. This has been happening ever since the inception of mankind. Men would hunt, gather animals, fruits, vegetables for food. Women would cook and do the household chores, of course, take care of babies as well. This parochial attitude has not changed even today. The reason for this not hard to find, women are not treated as equal in socially. The stereotypical woman in India is a weak, vulnerable homemaker waiting to be saved by the man. This image is portrayed every day by parents, schools, movies, news, social circles right from early childhood that they forget their true potential. Boys are income, encouraged to experiment and girls expected to be obedient. Boys are expected to aim higher education and girls are expected to pick the easy ones. The kind of early childhood social conditioning discourages the girl child from the even dream of having a career. In our society, a girl is always under scrutiny the moment she is born. Her walking, talking, dressing, sitting, standing, eating under scanner. Her friends are always under probe. Her phone calls, messages, emails, Facebook, Whatsapp, Every possible thing is under the watchful radar. The fact is women by nature they are naturally wired and programmed are more open minded and liberal than men are. If we allow her to rule the family, she will make sure everyone is happy and get what they want. She won't set terms and conditions like men do. She is like a lioness. She will provide and protect her offspring and when they grow up, she will set them free to rule the jungle like in Bible Proverbs told like that in 31st chapter 10 to 31. This is the only reason men are afraid to give her freedom. If we talk about today modern times, to some extent, things have changed in people's attitudes, 
especially in urban India, but it is only superficial. Go through the matrimonial ads. This is what we get to see. Wanted a yeah, very fair, good-looking, homely girl for a handsome boy, yearning, etc. Lot of guys have matured these days. They don't ask for dowry, but they want a girl who is yearning, educated and speaks English, presentable and of course good-looking. Seriously, who needs dowry when your wife is yearning? So, we see the very mentality of people has never changed. We can compare the state of woman in our country as a domesticated cow who is a milch. She raises her offspring, grasses within the prescribed area, always obeys her master's command. Her masters are father, brother, husband and son respectively have full control over her. The moment a girl is born and till her marriage, she stays under the control of her father and brother. When she grows up, gets married, she is controlled by her husband. When she is old, sick, fragile, she is controlled by her son. She never lives for herself. She never lives on her own. She lives for someone else's happiness till her death. Patriarchal system that is prevalent in India does not easily comprehend or accept women political leaders. The system is loaded against women in any ruler or urban setting. Decision making is controlled by a few elite whatever the political system. If we want true representation of people, then we need to create the space forcefully if necessary. Women have been discriminated socially, economically and politically. Since women are not given social equality in India, affirmative actions are necessary to uplift and empower women. Women empowerment leads to increase the country prosperity. Reservations give women an opportunity to educate and empower themselves. It gives opportunities for rise in the status of women socially, economically and politically. What is the issues faced by women in India? In health, even though sex Selective abortion is illegal in India. It has not achieved its purpose since more female infants than male ones die as a result of parental neglect. Even today, birth of a cal child is considered as inauspicious. People prefer male children. Presently, India has an average sex ratio of 908 females per 1000 males, which is quite alarming. Families are also less likely to spend on health care of girls and women as opposed to boys and men. Education 23 percentage of girls drop out of schools on reaching poverty due to a lack of facilities for them to manage their menstruation. The reason why we don't have toilets is because issues relating to women welfare are overlooked by men who run the government for over 70 years. If you educate a man, he educate a man. If you educate a woman, she educate a generation. Only 35% of girls worldwide study STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering and mathematics. This gender disparity is all the more alarming as STEM careers are often referred to as the job of the future. The engine of innovation, social well-being, inclusive growth and sustainable development. There is an urgent need to increase the representation of women in 
all positions of influence our female students among others need female role models to encourage them to go for it discrimination traditional family structures ensure girls have less access to education more girls dropped out of secondary and higher education than boys for reasons such as menstruation and familial obligations cultural traditions the practice of child marriages is common in india as it attacks on women female infanticide a culture of abuse and violence from family and community and silence on the women's part makes it india a dangerous situation for women to live in human trafficking india ranks in tier 2 in the us state departments list which stands for countries which are do not meet the minimum requirements to eliminate human trafficking india has made significant advancement in identifying victims and creating shelter homes nevertheless these are not adequate sexual and non sexual violence almost 90 percentage of the violence against women is happening at the hands of persons known to the women women who do, who do report crimes have to face obstacles at every level right from the police health care providers to the judiciary violence against caste and religious minorities evident dowry expectations during marriage dowry social reality in india marriage is a very difficult process in india girls are verified in every aspect there are so many women from poor families who remains unmarried or faces late marriages because of financial constraints along with dowry bride's parents need to look after whole marriage expenses domestic violences the condition of more number of housewives are pathetic in india women are often tortured physically assaulted by their spouses and in laws if women becomes educated then they will get good jobs and earn themselves become economically independent they will have a courage and knowledge of law to fight against the exploitation every hour of one every hour one woman died in india due to dowry death punishment for the accused is not a solution in domestic violence what is needed is prevention ways and means are there but where is the will most of the housewives don't seek divorce from their husbands in spite of being assaulted physically and facing domestic violence because of economic dependency on their husbands and lack of social support if a non working woman seeks divorce it is difficult for her to survive in her maternal home also as her siblings even parents consider her as burden arranged marriages result in unhappy marriages with no escapes since the girl is not economically empowered in case of a failed marriages they continue to endure the violence and lead a miserable lives sociologists report that violence against women has been on the rise ever since they have started stepping out of their traditional roles as homemakers the more women enter into public spaces the more violence they are likely to face violence against women is a heinous manifestation of deep seated prejudice against them which dictates that 
she must be confined to the domestic sphere the sprijudi still dominate our ethos when we note that india's female labor force participation rate has been dramatically falling and has fallen to a historic low of 23.3 percentage as per the national statistics survey office from this to argue that women have won the battle to work is far from the truth statistics about domestic violence and dowry deaths in india clearly shows that marriage is in india is not truly really happy union socio economic pressure on women forces them to tolerate the abuses because they cannot live independently the social pressure of being labeled as a difficult person makes a woman not have a second chance at marriage life a woman will not be able to come out of domestic violence if she has no economic security many women feel to be part of an happy family than being a member of the parliament girl children are expected to fetch water for the household debriefing them of school time girl children leave schools because of lack of toilets girl children stereotyped to get into some professions only that is nursing tailoring and teaching etc girl children are malnourished and don't receive adequate medical care about 5 lakhs girl children are killed every year because of female infanticide in india no one blinks an eye in the indian parliament about this 8000 women die because of dowry every year transgender all denied seats in colleges and schools they are not given jobs they are treated like trash i think the government should start thinking about them also now these are not discussed as a national priority as much as conflicts that due to involve with men most of the major political parties do not encourage women issues to be a central political theme in their, their campaign unless a physically or sexually violent matter such as rape or domestic violence is highlighted in the media further it is also important to understand how women issues are often relegated within the sphere of the private whereas their socio economic marginalization is systematically invisibilized or selectively visibilized within mainstream politics for instance women's empowerment revolves around issues of reproduction and marriage but their socio economic conditions of employment education and health rarely in politics such systematic invisibility diverts our attention from larger structure of oppression such as the state to more immediate oppressor like the patriarch of the family the lack of representation of women in powerful position in the lok sabha or the legislative assemblies hinder the focus required on women education and financial independence that may have helped them to break free from oppressive familial ties this is not to trivialize everyday forms of oppression within the family it is to stress on the idea that not only the category of woman internally heterogeneous but the antagonism and challenges that they face in their everyday are also multiples our country may not be unequally the worst country for women but we must do our past in acknowledging and addressing the gendered problems that we do have if we are looking towards development and progress as our national goals we cannot turn a blind eye towards the sex that falls short of the being half the population merely being better than islamic nations 
which are blagged with their own problems cannot be the goal of India. No one is denying the progress that has been made in terms of women rights but when so many women living live being denied even their basic rights this cannot be the point where we stop dear brothers and sisters here i stop this video the continuation video coming on this on successively for getting the more details i made it in the description go through that kindly pray for this women reservation 50 percentage of political reservation should happen in india amen